I see the hatred in your eyes, well hidden behind courtly graces. I listen. I know the terrible darkness that hides behind your well-rehearsed lies. I wait for you at the edge of sanity. I taste the pain in your mind, the yearning to end this charade. I make my home in the darkest pits of your soul. In the shadows I bide my time. I patiently wait for you to open your eyes and realize that it is by my will alone that you draw breath. For I am Zinch, and you are my puppet who dances to my tune. Of the four lords of chaos who seek dominion over the mortal world and victory in the great game, none is more complex and frightful than the changer of ways and manipulator of fate, Zinch. Zinch is known as the god of magic, the great schemer, the raven god, and the architect of fate. Zinch knows every hidden ambition, desire, and aspiration. No plot or plan is safe from his inquisitive eye, and is the weaver of all machinations, all plans of mortal actions, all serve his own great ambitions, and plans that he weaves with such grand complexity that no mere mortal mind could ever comprehend it. No other lord of chaos can claim as many titles, faces, or names as Zinch. He takes any form he desires, though it is often one of incomprehensible monstrosity and complexity. Even attempting to perceive the forms of Zinch and make sense of them can drive one to madness, a stage that Zinch is all too familiar with. He is most commonly depicted as a huge, grossly formed humanoid with gangly limbs. Instead of a head on his shoulders, his face sits squarely in his chest. Two prehensile horns ending in hideous faces adorn his shoulders, and as Zinch speaks, these two faces whisper in both agreement and contradiction with his statements, making it confusing and maddening to listen to. For it is this gift to his acolytes and followers that Zinch gives. He is the god of all magic, sorcery, and hidden knowledge. All mortals that seek magical power or greater truths will be drawn to Zinch. However, Zinch is not as benevolent or generous as Nurgle, nor is he as accepting or open as Slanish. He will offer what he knows and what he has, but never all of what he knows, and never without a very steep price. Like all the Chaos Gods, Zinch draws his strength from mortal desires and actions, and for Zinch, it is the desire for change, transformation, and evolution that gives him power. All mortals great and small seek that which is different. The child who dreams to one day grow to adulthood is, in a sense, desiring that change from immaturity to maturity. And though a simple change in the grand scheme of things, no scheme is above Zinch's interest. What is truly horrifying is Zinch's passion and desire for manipulation. He cannot resist dabbling in the affairs of mortals, for all mortals are his playthings, puppets that he uses to play his own sick and twisted game of lies, change, and destruction. Even mortals who detest chaos, who only seek to defend their homes, to better their lives, or simply rise above their station. All these ambitions and wants for change can fuel the plans and strengths of Zinch. And Zinch is able to aid mortals in their desires, in their quests for change, but never for free, and certainly not of your own choosing. For change is not always pretty, it's not always what one expects, and it is not always kind. But it is all amusing to Zinch. A man may seek greater magical knowledge, and thus seek Zinch out to enrich his understanding of sorcery. He will offer anything to the god of magic. But he has nothing Zinch desires, for Zinch cares little for mortal things. Instead, what he desires is the change itself. He will give this man knowledge, but the sudden blessing of knowledge will warp the man both physically and mentally. His mind will break under eons of magical understanding man was never meant to comprehend. His form will twist and become more demonic, as his mortal form cannot handle the sudden truths he is exposed to, and his soul will shred itself to pieces, all at the whim and behest of the Raven God. 
And yet, it is inevitable, for all who practice magic or sorcery, in part, give some of themselves to Zinch, as he is the master of all magic and sorcery, and those who dabble in it inadvertently fuel the god of magic, even if they do not worship him directly. Zinch is always scheming, always building plots and plans of grand complexity and design. None can fathom their end, and no mind can unravel the intricacies of them. The results of Zinch's plots may not bear fruit for generations after the beginning, but it is all the same to Zinch, for contrary to popular belief, not even the architect of fate himself can say for certain the end result of all his scheming. For he does not scheme with a grand end goal in mind. Rather, the changer of ways plots for the sake of it. He schemes for the art of scheming itself, not for some grand design. Many of his machinations seem not only meaningless for his goals, some might even seem contradictory. There are battles Zinch will deliberately lose, and yet he will not be upset by the loss, for to him the confusion of his acolytes, the surprise of his enemies, and the feelings of uncertainty from all parties, that is the greatest pleasure to Zinch, to never be understood, to embrace that which is unfathomable. The god of schemes and treachery may desire victory in the great game like his brothers, but to him the fun is not in the winning, but in the game itself. In fact, Zinch came very close to victory at one point over his brothers. There was a period where Zinch threatened to overshadow his brothers and finally win the great game. But realizing that an end to the game would end all the plotting and planning of his brothers and the mortals attached to them, he felt it would no longer be fun and purposefully sabotaged himself so as to carry on his scheming. His willingness to allow himself to be defeated for the sake of his schemes has led some to believe that Zinch is one of the weaker Chaos God, and it is true that Zinch does not care for brute strength as much as he does cunning. Zinch presents in a manner that leads some to underestimate him, that he does nothing but plot and scheme but never devote himself to a cause or to an end goal. But this thought is a gross underestimation of Zinch's true terrifying capabilities. Truly the ways and plans of Zinch are a mystery to all, even to himself at times. But perhaps that's more fun to Zinch. So imagine if you will, if he were to actually care about the end goal of his planning. Of his brother, Zinch has a particular hatred for Nurgle. While Zinch is the god of change and transformations, Nurgle is the god of stagnation and simplicity. Nurgle's goals align with the despair of mortals to accept the inevitable, to embrace death, decay, and renewal of life in an endless and predictable cycle, and it disgusts Zinch, who is the embodiment of change, resistance, and a desire to see things alter. To Zinch, mortals must always fight against the cyclical nature of life. That's what magic is, the power to alter reality, space, and time itself to suit your ends and to change your fate and your lot in life. Nurgle stands in complete defiance of this, believing that all should simply accept the truth, that life leads to death, and there is beauty in this fatalistic understanding. Zinch claims he does not care for the actions or plans of his brothers, and yet he will often go out of his way to debilitate or stand against Nurgle. The realm of Zinch is a massive crystal labyrinth in a void of stormless and intimidating skies. The Crystal Labyrinth is a great plateau that rivals Korn's own wastelands of war, but this labyrinth is no ordinary maze. There are no gods or defenders within its passages, and the maze has no fixed path, as it constantly changes and alters at the unconscious whim of Zinch. Only those with the strongest wills could hope to endure it, for the walls of this maze do not just reflect light, but hopes, dreams, desires, failures, memories, and despair. It is a realm none can emerge from with their sanity intact. The weaker of minds will find themselves lost forever, chewing on their own tongues and babbling incoherently, a prisoner of their own minds as the visages of unfathomable realities play in their eyes for eternity. For the realm of chaos is not governed by the laws of reality that you or I are used to. Dreams take shape, physical bodies are altered, and illusions become very real. Nowhere is this more true than in the labyrinth. But were one to actually make it through the maze, they would come upon the impossible fortress, Zinch's home. This fortress is impossible in every metric. Its spires, towers, 
Walls and portals will build themselves, collapse within seconds, only for new ones to emerge again and again with no set pattern or understanding of reason. Within the fortress, reality is a twisted joke. Each room and hall obeys its own rules. One room may have the mortal progress back in time with each step. Another could lead to a room where the laws of gravity are reversed. Another might have the mortal altered in body and mind. Those who find themselves lost within the castle are doomed to suffer eternal madness. Not even demons are safe from the mad machinations of the fortress, which is why even the other Chaos Gods know better than to send their minions within its walls. Zinch can easily ignore the needs of his fortress, as he sits in his great library, reading the fates and ways of the universe, time and space itself. Only when his labyrinth is attacked directly does he ever shift his gaze to the needs of his realm, for even the changer of ways can be made vulnerable if unprepared. But Zinch is always prepared. While all Chaos Gods have their own plans for the mortal world and their own strategies for winning the great game, all three Gods of Chaos are sure to be wary of Zinch. His ways are a mystery, even to them. Even in his defeats does he continue to grin and chuckle to himself. He is not to be underestimated, and he is never to be trusted. No promise of Zinch comes free, and no wish he grants will be without recourse. All life is his plaything. All aspirations and dreams are his tools to shape and mold for his own benefit. Magic comes from him, and the mortal will is his delight. The threads of fate can be understood by no living creature, but Zinch knows them all weaving them into his own demented tapestry of insanity, deception, and terror. He is the Raven God, the changer of ways, and the architect of fate. All take pause in awe of the being that is Zinch. I will admit Zinch was never my favorite Chaos God, mostly because I always found him a bit insufferable. You ever play a multiplayer game and beat the living crap out of someone in the game and then they message you to tell you that you're trash? You point out that you won, but then they say, Dude, I let you win. I'm just letting it happen because I want to. I'm not trying right now. That's the same kind of energy I always got from Zinch. A smug troll who isn't nearly as cool as the other gods, but when he gets his butt kicked, just shrugs and goes, I plan for it. I'm not bad. It all just goes into a bigger plan you couldn't comprehend. It's like a Rick and Morty fan who says, If you don't like the show, you're just too stupid to understand it. That's Zinch to me. You can't understand why you won and I lost. You're too small-brained, and no one looks at and no one looks at that guy and says, "Wow, how impressive." They all think, "Wow, he's pathetic and he's coping." Hence, why Zinch always annoyed me. But now I've done more research on him, I can say this for certain: he's still not my favorite, but he's definitely not bad. I love that Zinch actually doesn't know what he's planning either, that he's just scheming for the sake of it. He himself can't even figure out what it means in the end, just that he can mess with these things. It's like a little kid who plays with Legos or Tinker Toys. They aren't sure what they're going to have in the end, but they can't resist trying new structures, designs, and combinations. Zinch comes off as a very curious and twisted child. A child looks at the world through the lens of change. Children get bored with routine. They want new things, adventurous things. They want to grow up. They want to try new experiences, taste new foods, meet new people, play new games. The mundane becomes boring for a child. That's why I like that Grandpa Nurgle is rivals with Zinch. I wish Zinch was the youngest so that that contrast would work even better. And for the record, if you can't tell from my voice, yeah, Nurgle's pretty mad I'm talking about Zinch right now, so he made me six just to see if he could stop me. Sorry, Grandpa Nurgle, not stopping this raven. But Zinch embodies an aspect of theology that I think is quite imperative. God is all-knowing, omnipotent, and is the master of reality and creation. In the world of Warhammer, Zinch claims to embody this aspect of God, but the difference is that God knows the end goal. He doesn't have to plot or scheme everything before him for the plan is already known and in motion for an obvious end result. Zinch, meanwhile, isn't even sure what he's working toward, and that's just funny to me. Of the Chaos Gods, Zinch was always the one, like I said, who I wasn't really that interested in. And I suppose to some extent, he's still the one that I find a little hard to get interested in, because I just can't understand it. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, far from it, that's actually a good thing. As my father used to say, if we could understand God fully, he wouldn't really be God. And the fact that we can't understand Zinch, well, I mean, that works. You can't fully understand what goes on in his mind. And like I said, I think it's very creative that even he doesn't quite know what he's doing all the time. He just likes to scheme and plot and plan, even if there is no end result that he can fathom. Because no one could fathom it, and that makes it more fun for him. So I do like that. 
but at the same time, I do like the other gods because they're a bit more easy to comprehend. You know, you got Corn. He's just angry. He wants to fight. He wants war. He wants power. He wants violence. He's all about the up close and personal show power to show your might kind of thing. You got Nurgle. He understands that life and death is a cyclical repeat. You know, it's a circle of life from Lion King, right? You live, you die, you do it all over again. Disease and decay are a natural part of existence. You need to accept it and you'll be happy in life. He's gross, he's disgusting, but he makes sense. And Slanesh is literally just do whatever you want. Whatever tickles your fancy, whatever tickles your pickle, whatever makes you aroused, whatever, whatever you get off on, do it. Go for it. Do it in excess. Everything you want is at your disposal. Nothing should hold you back. And those make sense. Zinch, meanwhile, makes no sense, and that's his whole point. I'm going to plot and plan, even if it's to my own detriment, and you can't understand it. Ha ha, I'm too smart for you. I think there's something annoying, but also very beautiful about that. And that wraps up all of the gods of chaos. We have now talked about all four gods of chaos. Now, the ultimate question that I'm probably going to be asked, and I should probably save this like in more detail for a later video, but I'll give you my brief synopsis here, since some of you want to hear it. Who do I think would win the great game, all things considered? I actually talked to Lark about this the other day, and here's my um, thought on the matter. If Zinch has his way, no one will win, because he will always make sure that the game keeps on going so that he can continue to have fun with it, because it's all fun to him. Plotting and planning and uh, making schemes is his whole thing, and if he ever wins, or if any of them ever win, then there that goes. So he's going to make sure it never ends, but if I had to pick one who I think will win in the long run, I'm going to give it to Slanesh, and I'll tell you why I think that. Of the Chaos Gods, Slanesh has an easier time bringing people into her fold. She does a much better job of bringing people in and having them worship her and devoting themselves to her because everyone wants things. They always want excess. They want pleasure. They want to feel um, like they're happy all the time. And so Slanesh has a very easy time getting that. So what happens when Slanesh gets too powerful and uh, the other Chaos Gods decide, all right, let's team up to take her down. She will have more mortal allies and mortal um, devotees who are willing to help aid her in her fight. Plus, there have been plenty of times where Slanesh has actually threatened the other Chaos Gods. I think it's very interesting that in Warhammer 40k, when Slanesh was first created, the first thing Nurgle does is attack her outright to try to put her in her place, and it certainly didn't work. Slanesh hasn't learned anything from that experience, which goes to show that Slanesh isn't one to be easily put down. I think Slanesh is probably one of the more dangerous of them, especially in the Warhammer fantasy story, where she created those chalices for each of the other Chaos Gods, and all of them take good care of those uh, uh, chalices, even Corn, who tried to break his own but still puts it back together again all the time because it's just too beautiful. He can't stand to be without it. If you have the ability to manipulate the feelings of other chaos gods, like that's scary. So that's why I give it to Slanesh. N not to say that the others don't have their um, advantages and their own ways of handling it, but that's just my pregame prediction. But y'all may disagree, and you're free to share your thoughts in the comment section below. What did you think of the series? Did you enjoy it? Um, leave your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to support the channel. And now I'm going to go rest a while and hope that um, this blessing of Nurgle goes away after some uh, prayers to the Emperor. Thank you guys so much, and I will see you in my next video. Take care.